Good morning now, viewers. I wanted to come on just a couple minutes early just to make a couple of announcements. I will not be playing the now theme song until I find a better way to actually have it project. All right, so that you all can hear it without me doing stuff with the mic and all that stuff. All right, so wanted to say that. Um, merciful Monday, haven't said that in a while. We are going to be merciful to people on today, people that we wouldn't normally be merciful to, whether it's ourselves, whether it's our, our family members, whomever it may be, try to be a little bit merciful because God has been mercy, merciful to us. He's shown mercy unto us. All right. So um, that as well. And then um, I'm asking if you all gave to vibes.coffee via GoFundMe. If you gave to, I'm talking too fast, I can feel the oxygen. Um, if you all gave to Vibes Coffee through GoFundMe, I'm asking that you privately reach out to me. I have something for you, okay? So I'm gonna say that again. If you went, um, gave to Vibes Coffee through GoFundMe, I'm asking that you reach out to me privately. If you are a YouTube viewer and you um, contributed, try to find a way, um, I don't know, just say um, call me or, or something so that we're not putting business out on YouTube, okay? I know it's not as easy to reach me if you're a YouTube viewer, um, but I don't think there were many of you watching at the time that we were doing the um, GoFundMe for Vibes.Coffee. All right, I take a break these next few seconds, calm down, try to make sure this cough doesn't come on, and then we will get started. When we will start, we will be in Genesis chapter 47, starting with verse 1. Don't really have anything else except I love you all. I truly do. I thank you for getting up and spending time with God. Heavenly Father, come to you on this day. Thank you and praising you for who you are, Lord God. Yet another day that your loving touch woke us up, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would guide us throughout this day, Lord. Help us to be merciful to people on today, Father. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would help me to slow down, Father, that I may be able to present your word in the manner that you desire, Lord God. I decrease, Lord God, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would rise up within me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 47. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3 from the King James. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. All right, before we go ahead and start discussing verse 1, I want you to put on your thinking caps again, and I just want to go back um, to these math problems that we were doing the other day in case anybody was like, hmm, hold up, okay? Um, when we were in Genesis 46, chapter, I mean, Genesis chapter 46, verse 27, it said, And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three score and ten. All right, and I was telling you all before that um, there were 33 souls that came from Leah, right? 
that was not including um, Shul because she was uh, he was not Leah's son. All right, so 33 plus Shul is 34, or Shaul is 34. But remember, two died. All right, so two souls did not go in. So um, 34 minus 30, 34 minus two is 32. All right, so if we take those 32 plus Zilpah's 16, Rachel's 14, and Bilhah's seven, and then you end up with 39. Don't forget that it says the souls of the house of Jacob. Jacob made number 70. All right, because he did come into Egypt. All right, let's go ahead and go to chapter 47. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. All right, so everybody is in Goshen, and he is presenting some of his brothers unto Pharaoh. Don't forget as well, if you see italics in your Bible, those were words that were added to help the English language. All right, they are not added to change anything. Um, and so just want you to know that you could read it without the italicized word. Verse 3, And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray, we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. All right, <clears throat> so they're basically saying, hey, we need to make sure that we have a pasture in order to take care of our flock, and Goshen is the best place. Verse five, And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee, the land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any man of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. All right. This is when you know you are secure in who you are. Pharaoh is king of Egypt, right? But he is telling second in charge, Joseph, hey, your family can have the best of the land because I know that I am here only because of you. All right. <clears throat> when someone has done something for you that is like ir impossible to pay back, I was going to say you're repay repayable. I don't know, um, but it's impossible to pay back. You do everything in your power to let them know how much you appreciate them, right? And so Pharaoh is saying, hey, the best of the land, go ahead, let your family dwell there. <clears throat> if we look at six again, though, it says, the land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. All right, and this reminds me of Psalm 23. It says, um, Lead us the green pastures, um, make us lie down in green pastures, lead us beside the still waters, right? And my question is, why is it when it comes to the good things of God, we have to be made to do them? Don't understand that. Excuse me. If we were sheep that were looking to thrive and all of that, you would think that we would just go ahead and rest in the things of God but he has to make us to lie down in green pastures. Excuse me one moment. <clears throat> okay. Um, and it says again in six, the land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. When it comes to 
um, activity. This is the first time we've had this in the Hebrew and it is pronounced Hayil, Hayil, and it means strength, might, wealthy, or force. All right. So bottom line is if you know anybody who can command people, then make them the rulers over my cattle. And again, he's secure in who he is that he can say, hey, my men don't know it all. Go ahead and the wisdom from the Hebrews um, put them over my cattle. Verse 7, and Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh and Jacob blessed Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Jacob how old art thou and Jacob said unto Pharaoh the days of the years of my pilgrimage are in hundred and thirty years few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage and Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before him all right and so Jacob um, Pharaoh is looking at Jacob and he's like you know how old are you and he tells him but he says the days of his pilgrimage and pilgrimage in the Hebrew is pronounced Magur Magur and it means temporary abode this is what we have to remember this is not our home there is a song that they put out um, that said um, basically that this is this is not our home um I, I can't think of it right now but if we have to remember that we are not living for this life we are living for eternal life we are living for what is to come all right and so if it gets hard that's what he said he said few and evil have the days of the years of my life been so he's like 130 years that's nothing but they've been evil as Christians we're going to end up saying the same thing that the days have been evil because being a Christian is not for the weak you get talked about you get mistreated you get abused you get ostracized you get a lot of things being a Christian but I just encourage you to just hold on it's worth it because the last shall be first and the first shall be last all right verse 9 again and Jacob said unto Pharaoh the days of the years of my pilgrimage are in hundred and thirty years few and evil have the days of the years of my life been and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage he's basically saying he's nowhere near the age that his fathers ended up being and Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh and Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt in the best of the land in the land of Ramesses as Pharaoh had commanded all right Ramesses I'm not even going to try to pronounce how it or to pronounce how it is in the Hebrew but it means child of the Sun all right and this is another reminder Genesis is written by Moses all right Moses was not alive during this time this is an account given to him by God excuse me by God and so Moses is able to at this time when he's writing it to say that the place is now called Ramesses all right and so it wasn't that it was called that then it was called Goshen but it ended up becoming called Ramesses all right so that's where you get that as Pharaoh had commanded verse 12 and Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families verse 13 and there was no bread in all the land for the famine was very sore so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine all right and so now the um, corn has run out in all of the places of Egypt except for where Joseph has it stored all right and um, Canaan is also suffering verse 14 and Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought 
and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence, for the money faileth. All right, so they've bought all that they can buy. They don't have any more money, but they're still like, you know what? We need your help. All right, give us bread. Verse 16, and Joseph said, give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle, if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with bread for their cattle for that year. All right, so they are bringing the animals to Joseph, and he guarantees them a year, a year of sustenance, all right? Um, in verse 17, this is the first time that the word horses is mentioned, and it's pronounced in the Hebrew sus, sus, or cease, cease, either way, and it's from an unused root meaning to skip and properly for joy. All right, so skipping for joy. All right, um, we are going to definitely end here. I didn't think I was going to get through um, 18 because I am struggling to keep this cough down, but I thank God for who he is for being my keeper. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would go before us on this day, Father. Continue to show us mercy, Lord God, not in proportion to what we show others, because we would be in trouble, Father. But help us, Lord God, to remember the mercy that you show us, so that we may be a little bit more merciful on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I love you all, and Lord willing, see you all on tomorrow.